فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد The book inshallah ta'ala that we're going to start today is called Jilbab al-Mar'at al-Muslimah This kitab is written by Al-Shaykh al-Allama Muhammad Nasir al-Din al-Albani rahimahullah Al-Shaykh al-Allama Muhammad Nasir al-Din al-Albani So the scholars when they start a book they speak about the book they also speak about the author of the book. So inshallah ta'ala, many of you probably know of Sheikh Albani. You've read some of his works, but you probably don't know his biography. So inshallah ta'ala, a very abridged biography of the author, rahimahullah, we will do before we start the kitab. Who is the author of this book? His name is Al-Shaykh Muhammad Nasiruddin Ibn Al-Hajj Nuh Al-Albani. The Shaykh, in the Islamic calendar, he was born 1333, which is in accordance to the Muslim, uh, in accordance to the Gregorian calendar, the Shaykh Rahimahullah was born 1914. That's World War I. 1914. Shaykh Albani was born World War I. And he was born in a city called Ashkoda. Ashkoda. which is the Asima, it is the capital of Albania. And I don't know if it's the capital now. It used to be the capital when the Sheikh Rahimullah, but I don't know if it's the capital now, I'm not sure. The Sheikh Rahimullah is from a, a poor family. The Sheikh was from a poor family, but there was a family that was in love of knowledge. And you don't really find that common in the, uh, in the Albanian community, that the knowledge and the deen is like that. Sheikh was from a family who loved the ilm and the knowledge and gave importance to it. His father, Sheikh al-Albani, he was a marja, he was a reference point for the people. He would teach them and he would guide them in their questions and their requests. His father, Sheikh Al Albani's father, Al Hajj Nuh, he took his family to Dimashq, Sham, to stay there after the leader of that time, whose name was Ahmed Zahu, who was the king of Albania had deviated from the path that the country had, which is some Islamic. It started to adopt more secular approach. His father took him from Albania and he took him to uh, Dimashq Sham. And Sheikh Albani used to always say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me with many things. And one of the things Allah has blessed me with, Sheikh Al-Bani used to say, is that my father took me out from Albania and took me to Sham, Dimashq. The Sheikh, Rahimahullah, he finished his studies, his primary. He finished his primary 
دراسته الابتدائيه in مدرسه الاسعاف الخيري in دمشق and his passing rate was بتفوق his it, it was with distinction the sheikh passed greatly and he was sharp as an individual his father sheikh al albani used to not like this he didn't like the school system he was in favor of it he didn't, he didn't like it the dirasat the madaris al nizamiya these schools and the way they are organized he didn't like it the sheikh uh, the father of sheikh al albani rahimahullah and he didn't like the these schools because of the religious angle the way that the person would lose their deen and the way it was he didn't like it so his father made a decision that he albani rahimahullah will not finish school he took him out of the school and he placed for him manhajan ilmiyan his father placed for him a methodology in studying the religion and sheikh al albani in that time he studied the quran and his father made him also study tajweed nahw and sarf so sheikh al albani rahimahullah he studied the quran he also studied tajweed and he also studied nahw grammar and he also studied sarf morphology and he also studied fiqh al madhhab al hanafi he studied the madhhab or the hanafi madhhab book he did and he finished the quran with his father and he memorized it bi riwayati hafs an asim he memorized the common riwayah that we know the riwayah of hafs an asim the sheikh rahimahullah he studied with a sheikh saeed al burhani and he studied with him maraq al falah which is in the fiqh of hanafi he also studied other books of language and balagha at that time and the sheikh rahimahullah used to give a lot of importance to making sure that he participated in the lessons and also in the seminars and conferences of allama bahjat al baydar sheikh bahja al baydar uh, Sheikh Al-Albani used to make he used to put a lot of effort and hard work in making sure that he participated in the durus and the nadawat the lessons and also the conferences and the seminars that were done by Al-Allama Bahjat Al-Baytar Sheikh Al-Albani took from his father an occupation which was fixing watches His father used to fix watches and that's how he used to bring fresh rizq to his family. And so Sheikh Al Albani he studied that from his father as well. And he became perfect at it Sheikh Al Albani. Fa'ajadaha he perfected it until he became what? Hatta sara min ashab shuhrati fiha. He became very well known for it. People would come to him over everybody else. And that's where he would make his money from. rahimahullah and this can show you something which is that the sheikh was a daqiq person daqiq means what he would look at minute details person with fixed watches would have to really look deep at things and so sheikh al-albani was a person whose character was like that he was very very accurate and deep in his personality when he observed things and when he looked at things rahimahullah rahmatan wasi'a he rahimahullah loved working in this profession he loved working as a what and he loved this occupation of fixing watches because it gave him a lot of time lil mutala'ati wa dirasa he would go and read he would have extra time left to go out to read to uh, study and coming to dimashq benefited the sheikh for him to study the arabic language very much and also to study the uloom of the sharia from its sources 
As I just mentioned, his father, Push Sheikh Albani, rahimahullah, to study what? The fiqh of Hanafi Madhab. And his father was a, was a muqallid, a blind follower of the Madhab al Hanafi. But his son, Muhammad Nasiruddin al Albani, he didn't take that methodology like his father. Sheikh al Albani used to warn excessively from taqlid uh, madhabi, to be fanatic towards madhab to be a person who is what? who is muta'asib who is fanatic when it came to madhab so the shaykh rahimahullah he directed himself in studying ilmul hadith studying the science of hadith he studied it or he started embarking on this studying Ibn al-Hadith when he was at the age, when he was 20 years of age. And what was it that caused Sheikh al-Albani to go towards Hadith? There was a newspaper called Majallatul Manar. It's a magazine, more like. It's called Majallatul Manar. It's a magazine. And this magazine was written by a Sheikh called a Sheikh Muhammad Rashid Rida. Sheikh Muhammad Rashid Rida, Sheikh Muhammad Rashid Rida, he's the one who wrote this majalla. It was produced. So the Sheikh used to read it. Sheikh Al Albani would read the majalla, majalla. And <coughs> he one day saw on the majalla, majalla to Manar, he saw on it that Muhammad Rashid Rida was, he referenced. Um, what's his name? Uh, Sheikh Muhammad Al Ghazali. And as you know, Abu Muhammad Al Ghazali is a kitab called what? Ahiya Ulubuddin. And Muhammad Rashid Rida, he tackled what do you call Abu Muhammad Al Ghazali in this issue? Authenticating the narration and speaking to him in this regard. So it really fascinated Sheikh Nasr that this was taking place in front of him. He liked what he saw. And the reference that Muhammad Rashid Rida was using to uh, correct Abu Hamid al Ghazali was from a book called Al Mughni and Hamli al Asfar, written by Al Imam al Hafid Zainuddin al Iraqi, the Sheikh of Hafid al Hajar. Iraqi has a takhrij on Kitab Hiya al Ubudin. So Muhammad, Sheikh Muhammad Rashid Rida was using the works and the efforts of Iraqi. He was a great scholar of hadith and he's a teacher of who? He's a teacher of who? Ibn Hajar. So Sheikh Nasir rahimahullah when he saw this, he became happy and pleased. And at that time, the first book that Sheikh Nasir started to do takhrij from, or work on, or even to direct his efforts towards in takhrij was that kitab. This was his first kitab in which Sheikh Nasir rahimahullah he put his pen and paper on and started to write on the sides. Okay. And Sheikh Nasir, as he said, he said this majalla, majalla al manar by Muhammad Rashid Rida, he said it was a good opening for me. It was fatihatu khairin. It opened good doors for me, rahimahullah, until it became Sheikh Nasir rahimahullah al ihtimam high consideration to hadith and its sciences. And he became very well known in Dimashq for this now. He became very well known for hadith, authenticating narrations, looking at works, he became very well known. Until rahimahullah, he used to come to his shop every day he would fix people's watches, he would make his daily income, he would buy food from some of the money that he had, and the Shaykh Rahimahullah would go directly to a big maktaba called in Dimashq, Damascus, called Maktabat al Zahiriyah. Maktabat al Zahiriyah is a, one of the biggest Islamic makatin, one of the biggest Islamic libraries. And the Shaykh Rahimahullah the, the workers 
in Maktabatul Zahiriya when they saw him coming back in the coming and leaving at night, they made him a copy of the Maktaba. They gave him a copy and they also even gave him a room. So this is your room. No one else owns it with you except you. Nobody owns it except it's, this is only for you. So the Sheikh used to sit there and he would read every single book that he could find in the Maktaba. He would read in that Maktaba books that were published and even books that were manuscripts. Books that were what? Manuscripts that have yet not been, they have not been published yet. They have not gone, it's handwritten. It takes hours for you to just understand what a sentence is. Sheikh Nasr rahimahullah, he would read those manuscripts. He would go through them and he would work on them. Rahimahullah, rahmatan wasi'ah. As for the first book that he authored, that he authored himself, that was his works, not a book that he worked on. The first book that he authored from his own efforts and his, ho- his own work is the Kitab Tahrir <laughs> Sajid Mittikhad al Qubur Masajid, where he speaks about placing a grave inside a masjid. It's a book which is multiple, it's published many times, it got published. Um, Shaykh al Albani, Rahimahullah, his direction towards hadith was different from many people you might look and say to themselves, well, they know hadith as well. And this is the difference between him and many. Shaykh al Albani, Rahimahullah, was a man who you could say he was a, a person of hadith and sunnah, both of them. Many people you can say, he's a man of hadith. He busies himself in the science of hadith. But Sheikh Nasir was what? A person of hadith and sunnah. Rahimahullah, rahmatan wasi'a. Sheikh Al-Albani, through his works, his knowledge of hadith, he used it to propagate and call to tawheed and sunnah in Surya. That the scholars and the people or the students of knowledge in Dimashq would come to Sheikh Nasir and they would argue with him and they would debate with him and they would have munaqashat on masail pertaining to tawheed and masail and niqashat discussions pertaining to following the sunnah, blind following, bid'ah. People would visit him and they accused him of after not being able to discuss things with him and not being able to refute his points they referred to him as a Wahhabi Yumdal. A Wahhabi, misguided individual. They would tell the people not to go to him. When at that particular time, many other noble mashayikh and ulama had respected him. They, they admired his works when they saw what he came out with. Such as Al-Alama Bahjat al-Baytar. He saw Sheikh Al-Bani Rahimullah's efforts. Al Shaykh Abdul Fattah al Imam, who was a Ra'is Jamia to Shibbani Muslimin of Syria, Al Shaykh Tawfiq al Bazara, and other than them, who Ahl al Fadl was Salah, Rahimahumullah, who they saw Shaykh Nasir's efforts. And they praised him for his hard work. Bilalika, if you today sit down and you listen to Shaykh al Bani, his debates, you would be amazed of how powerful and eloquent he was in his arguments and how he was able to portray his points. The person would be so much issues forward, he would listen. And what amazed me by Sheikh Nasir was his etiquette of how he dealt with everybody. He would be quiet. Sometimes you would ask yourself, is he even in the room in the debate? Because it's a tape you're listening to or it's a recording. Sheikh Nasir hasn't got videos. So you're listening. Your question is, is he in the room? The person might be speaking for 45 minutes, half an hour, and Sheikh Nasr is quiet. But when he takes over, the way he governs everything, the way he controls the debate and the way it's going, his effort and his ability to convince you, and how calm he is. Calm. 
easy the way he's talking. Be that man of knowledge. Sheikh Al Albani's speech is the most easiest when it comes when it comes to listening to it. Of course, he sometimes speaks Lahaja Shabiya. He speaks in the dialect of Sham, but his language is very easy the way he talks. You would think he's a technical person the way he would speak because he's he's in a technical science. But it's a very simple person. His ayat are to the point. The way he's using the ayah is to the point. Rahimahullah ta'ala. Sheikh Albani's effort in da'wah. Sheikh Nasir rahimahullah ta'ala, his efforts in da'wah were very strong. Rahimahullah rahmatan wasi'ah. The Sheikh rahimahullah, his da'wah was fruitful in the following. Number one, his daily lessons that he would give. He would have two lessons a week. The students will come, and even some of the teachers of the universities would come. And the books that he would teach in some of these circles were Fatul Majid, the Kitab Fatul Majid, which is the Sharah of Kitab al Tawheed. He would also teach the book Al Rawda al Nadiya, which is the Sharah of Durar al Bahiyya by Shawkani, and the Sharah of Siddiq Hassan Khan. He would also teach Usul al Fiqh, the Kitab written by Abdul Wahab Khalaf. He would also teach Al Ba'ith al Hadith, Sharh Ikhtisar Ulum al Hadith by Ibn Kathir, and the Ta'liqat. The Ikhtisar Ulum al Hadith is by Ibn Kathir. The Ba'ith al Hadith is by Ibn, uh, Ibn Shakir, Ahmed Shakir. He would also teach the Kitab Fiqh al Sunda by Sayyid Sabiq, <coughs> and many other things. The second thing that showed that Sheikh's efforts uh, in Da'wah was. He's traveling. The Shaykh Rahimahullah, he used to travel. And he would go to different cities in Syria. He would travel around Syria. He wouldn't just stay in one place. Rahimahullah Ta'ala. He would also go to Jordan. And this is before he resided in Jordan. Rahimahullah. And the Shaykh Rahimahullah, he also traveled to Western countries. Sheikh Nasser came to the UK, came and visited the UK. And he did talks and lessons. Sheikh Nasser showed a lot of patience on the harm that he was afflicted with. When it was the year 1960, the Sheikh Rahimahullah, he fell under the oppression of the the Syrian government and they arrested him and the Sheikh was the furthest from politics he really didn't engage in politics and he didn't involve himself into politics and the Sheikh got arrested twice the first time that he got arrested Rahimahullah he was arrested for one month and he was arrested in Qal'at uh, Dimashq, the fortresses of Dimashq. And he got arrested in the same place that Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah got arrested. This place that Shaykh al Albani got arrested was exactly the same place in which Ibn Taymiyyah got arrested. Rahmatan wasi'a. The time that Sheikh Nasir spent in prison for that one month, he used to give da'wah in prison. He used to give da'wah to the prison guards. He would give da'wah to his, the inmates in the prison. He would call them to the sunnah. To the extent that the Sheikh Rahimahullah, he had an effect in the prison more than he had in the outer world. He would speak to them about Islamic symbols, the Sha'air and the religion, holding on to the Sunnah, Tawheed and Aqeedah, the Shaykh Rahimahullah would. The second time the Shaykh Rahimahullah, so that first time when he got arrested and the government saw the need to release some of the prisoners, they released him Rahimahullah. And then after a period of time they called him back in again. 
And this time they arrested him for, for eight months. And he stayed in prison the second time for eight months. But it wasn't in the Qala'atu Dimashq. This time they didn't take him there. They, take, they took him to another prison. Rahimahullah. He stayed, stayed there for eight months. And what he did in those eight months was he worked on the Kitab Mukhtasar Sahih Muslim. He requested if that book could be brought to him <coughs> and a pen <coughs> and papers. And he started to start to he started to note down points on the book and things of it, and he started to work on it. You can take the believer away from everything else, but knowledge for him is what? It's like oxygen. So the Shaykh Rahimahullah he worked on it. Rahmatan wasi'a. Shaykh Nasir, the reason why he was able to achieve that, even in prison, was that he was a very sincere person, Shaykh Nasir. Sincerity, his sincerity level was very high. One of the most famous statements that he used to say a lot is, Hubbu al-Dhuhur yuqsibu al-Dhuhur. He used to say, loving to be out in the open, and expose yourself to the people will break your back. Hubbu al-Dhuhur, loving to come out and, and show off, yuqsimu al-Dhuhur will break your back. Walidhalika, a man one time invited the Shaykh Rahimahullah, Shaykh Al-Bani, invited him over and he said to him, Shaykh, I want you to come and visit my house. And then what happened was, when he invited the Shaykh and told the Shaykh, please come to me, he also announced it on social television. He announced it and told the people, Shaykh Nasir is coming to my house. Al-Bani is going to visit my house. He said it to people. So many people in number came to see the Shaykh, to listen to him. When the Shaykh found this, found out, he refused to go. And so people asked him, Sheikh, why have you refused to go? And he said, Loving to bring yourself out and to be the forefront will break your back. So one needs to ask himself today, sincerity and loving to bring yourself out and to be the, whenever something is done, instead of just choosing to be maybe at the back of things, to just love to be at the front, it really goes against the secret, secret of success. The Sheikh was also one of the things that he was very good at is his amana fil istishara. If somebody told him something, he would keep that for them. Even if whatever happened between them later, the Sheikh would never tell anyone about it. Sometimes some people, they have a secret of you, yours, and they would use it in their advantage. And they would use it, they would use it against you. One of his students one day, he wanted to sell some of his books due to, due, due to financial reasons. So he told the Sheikh, he said, Sheikh, <coughs> do you think I should sell some of my books to get some financial aid and support from it? Or do you believe I should be patient? And what do you think? The Sheikh, Rahimahullah, he said, don't sell your books. Don't sell your books. Don't be patient. Student said, Jazakallah khair al-Sheikh. Student left the Sheikh rahimahullah ta'ala and then the Sheikh sent to the man that asked him, he said, inform him not to sell your maktaba, don't sell any books or any, any of your stars and inshallah ta'ala I will give you what you need financially. I'll give you the money that you need. I will borrow you it until you're able to give it to me. Not when I want it, but until you can give it to me. 
So this was, if he was consulted and somebody told him something, he would give them the best choice that he thought was the best. And you have to remember, he, rahimahullah, was financially not well off. He reached a level that Sheikh Al-Bani never used to have paper to write on and pen. That he would sometimes write on, if anybody, you know, post letters that would come to him. He would use that as a, he would not throw them away. Those papers that came to him, he would use those papers to benefit from it as paper. And to write on the takhrij of the hadith on it. Some of his takhrij and some of his authentication of the hadith were written on some post papers. Because of the fact that the Sheikh didn't have money. One of the things that Sheikh Nasir was very unique in was الدِّقَّةُ فِي الْمَوَاعِيدِ Allahu Akbar. He was precise when it came to promises. If he gave you his word and he told you something was going to happen, he was دَقِيق on that. الدِّقَّةُ فِي الْمَوَاعِيدِ Promises that he gave, done and he gave were precise. رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى 